Hi everyone, it's Macy from Twin Fringe. I recently got a custom order for a hanging macrame chair and I've never made anything quite like it. So I'm a little intimidated by this project, but I'm super excited for the challenge. Lately, I've seen a lot of macrame makers online posting about um, looking for how-to tutorial videos, patterns for a similar hanging macrame chair. And I've noticed there aren't very many resources for making something like this. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and film my process. And I'm not going off of any specific pattern. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it up as I go along. And hopefully this is helpful for any of you other makers looking to make a similar chair. All right, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm doing is taking measurements of this patio chair that I have because it has about a similar size to what I'd like my macrame chair to be. After gathering the measurements of my patio chair, I soldered these two copper frames for my hanging macrame chair. This is a 23 by 23 inch square for the seat of the chair. And this is a 25 by 42 inch rectangle, which is going to be the other support for the chair along the back and the front of it. Now, I chose to use copper for my frame because it's really sturdy and we had some extra copper lying around, but I recognize that not that many people have access to a soldering kit or know how to solder for that matter. Um, I actually just learned how to solder for this project. But I have seen other people recommend using PVC pipes and hula hoops for the frame. I would just think that it would need to be pretty thick to make sure that it doesn't break, but those are some more accessible options for you to try out as well. I just thought of another fun idea for a frame for your chair if you're feeling kind of stuck. You could always upcycle a chair that you already have, so maybe like an old patio chair, a moon chair, or I think they're called papasan chairs, and just use the frame of that. But just keep in mind that they may be a different shape than what I'm making, so the pattern's going to be a little different. For extra security on my seat frame, I also added two screws at each corner just to be safe. For this chair, I'm using five millimeter three ply cotton rope. So the next step I'm doing is attaching some cotton rope onto the frame using an overhand knot. And I'm simply just going to wrap a bunch of the rope around the frame completely. And I'll do that for the second frame as well. All right, my frames are completely covered in the cotton rope. As you can see, my plan to use one continuous strand of rope did not quite work out, but that's okay. I know us makers are used to our projects not going as planned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave those tassels for now and we'll figure out what to do with them later. I also noticed it was kind of difficult to completely cover the corners, but I think those will get covered up whenever we move further along. So I used about 250 feet of rope to cover the frames and I've set the chair up the way it's going to be sitting. So here's a side angle here. Oh, and there's my dog. Hi, Lenny. Lenny, there you are. All right, now it's time to create the braids that your chair suspends from. So for this project, I'm using two inch and a half steel rings that I got from the hardware store. Whatever hardware you choose, I recommend that it's extremely sturdy because you do not want it to break when you sit in the chair. That's why I chose these steel rings because they each have a 200 pound weight limit, so that's 400 pounds. In order to make the braids for my chair, I'm using two one and a half inch steel rings like I mentioned, four rubber bands, one for each braid, and I cut six pieces of 14 foot rope. So I already made one of the examples here but I'll go ahead and show you how I did the other. So I have three pieces of 14 foot rope and I simply folded it in half over the steel ring. And then I actually made one of the sides one and a half feet longer than the other. And so now 
all I'm going to do is tie a square knot using two of these cords. just to secure it to the ring. All right, now we're ready to go. So the key with making these braids is to make the braids as tight as you can because you do not want the rope to stretch out too much. It's going to stretch a little bit whenever you sit on it, but the key is to have it as tight as possible just to make sure it doesn't stretch out too much. So you wanna find the three pieces that are shorter here. Let me see. This one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a really tight braid. And I'm gonna make this one about 53 inches long. And then I'll go ahead and secure it with a rubber band. All right, I finished up that braid, so that is a 53 inch braid. So I'm just gonna turn it over and get started on the 63 inch braid. I just attached a set of braids to the chair, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do the other set. So first, I'm going to take the shorter braid and I'm going to measure two feet down on it. And that is where I'm going to attach right at the two foot mark. That's where I'm going to go ahead and make an overhand knot. Now I want to make sure that this is even because if it's not even then the chair is going to hang crooked. So it's super important that it's actually two feet, which it is, so perfect. Okay, so now let me make sure that's nice and straight. Okay, so now I'm going to tie that nice and tight. And then I'm going to attach it to the bottom here. Braid right there. So I'm going to attach it. I took the rubber band out and it started to unbraid. So now I'm going to attach it to the bottom frame using another overhand knot. And you want to make sure this is an extremely tight knot because you do not want your chair to go anywhere. Alright, so to attach the second braid, I'm just going to pull the first braid taut and I'm going to go all the way down and stretch the second rope down to the bottom corner. So I'm going to attach the braid using an overhand knot over both of the frames. 
So I'm going to tie the two frames together. You want to make sure you make this nice and tight. All right. So at the end of it, you should have a chair that looks like this so far. For the back of the chair, I cut 16 pieces of 14 foot rope and attached them to the frame using lark's head knots. I put them in pairs a couple of inches apart. I will continue to do rows of alternating square knots all the way down to the bottom of the frame. The only difference with how I'm doing these square knots is I'm actually turning the outer cords into the middle before I do each square knot. The only reason I'm doing this is for the design. Um, it's just for looks, so you can do regular square knots and they do just fine. With each row of square knots, I attach a piece of rope to the left side of the frame and the right side of the frame using Lark's head knots and I include them in the rows of square knots. This creates the netting for the sides of the chairs. Each piece of rope I attach to the sides of the frames are six inches shorter than the previous rope. The first rope I attach to the side frames are 14 feet long, so the second row will be 13 and a half feet long, the third row will be 13 feet long, and so on. I know it's a little difficult to see exactly what's going on, so I will show this in better detail in a moment. I just want to give you guys a better view of what's going on on the sides here. So with every row of square knots, I attach a, another piece of rope on either side using a lark's head knot, and I align it with the row of square knots. So this piece here goes with this row of square knots. This piece here lines up with this row of square knots and so on. So they're about, they're a couple inches apart just so they are in line with each of the rows of square knots. And when I measure each piece of rope, I make it about six inches shorter than the previous one. So this one is six inches shorter than this one, and so on. Another thing you might not have been able to see so far is that whenever I add in this rope, I'm actually creating square knots around the braid to kind of include it in the chair instead of having it behind the rope, behind these square knots. So I'm incorporating it in the middle by doing half of the square knot behind the braid and then half of it in front of to create a knot around the braid. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I mean. So with each of these square knots, I've been taking the outer, the outer two pieces of rope and actually putting them on the inside to create this twist. So what I'm doing around the braid is I'm bringing all four of these pieces of rope behind and I'm doing the first part of the square knot behind the braid. Like that. And now I'm gonna bring, now I'm gonna bring them forward So I'm including the braid in the square knot, just like that.
I just finished the back and the sides of the chair and I think it's coming together really well. So the only thing that didn't quite work out is this little section on both sides that didn't get filled in. So I'm gonna play around with that after I finish the seat. And I might just fill it in. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. And I haven't attached these to the frame yet, but I'll do that after I finish the seat. I'm gonna work on the seat now. So what I did was I cut 14 pieces of 11 foot rope and I attached them in pairs we're using Lark's head knots onto this bottom frame and I, I placed them a couple of inches apart. So I'm just gonna work a row of square knots. I just worked one row of square knots and then another row of alternating square knots. So the only difference between how I'm working the seats and how I worked the back of the chair is um, I'm still rotating the outer cords inward, but the only difference is I'm wrapping only on this square knot and on the far right square knot. I am wrapping the outermost cord around the frame before I tie this, the square knot. I hope that makes sense. So I'm basically just knotting around the frame. So there's one. And then I'll show you on this side too. So I'm turning the inner, the outer cords in. And then I'm wrapping this far right cord around the frame before I make the next square knot. Okay, it's time to secure the seat to the two frames. So I'm taking each square knot, the last row of square knots, and I'm taking the two inner cords and pulling them over the two frames. And then I'm taking the two outer cords and putting them underneath. And then I'm making a square knot. Actually, I'm making three square knots to really secure it. So you wanna make these nice and tight. I want these closer together, okay. So three square knots. Underneath the frames. Just like that. So here's another one. The two inner cords go over the top and I'm taking the two outer cords underneath and I'm going to secure it with three square knots and I'm gonna make sure they're nice and tight. And I'm just gonna do this all the way around the chair. So I'll be securing all of the loose rope. The front is completely secured. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same technique all the way around, securing the sides and the back as well.
I did just try sitting in the chair to test it out. And I went ahead and changed one thing. Um, instead of doing three square knots, I actually took, I still took the two inner pieces on the outside and then the two outer pieces of the square knot underneath. And then I just went ahead and tied a, um, an overhand knot, a double knot, and then I did two square knots. I think that makes it a little more secure. So I took out all of the three square knots and replaced it with um, a double overhand knot and then two square knots. I went ahead and trimmed up all the fringe and the excess rope as well. And then I, the rope that I used to wrap around the frames, um, I went ahead and cut those short. And I decided I actually don't mind these two triangles on either side of the chair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave those like it is. I think it looks good. Yeah, let me get a better view. Ta-da! My chair is finished and I am so happy with how it turned out. I ended up using about 800 feet of rope total for this chair. And in order to hang the chair, I used two of these hooks, four of these snap clips, and some chain. Soon I will be adding a chair kit to my shop, which will include two soldered copper frames and all of the hardware you need in order to hang the chair. So all you need is the rope of your choice. If you'd like to be one of the first people to find out when this is launched in my shop, go ahead and visit www.twinfringe.com and sign up for my newsletter. All right, thanks for watching. If you end up trying out my tutorial and make a chair, I would love to see how it turns out. Tag me at Twin Fringe on Facebook and Instagram so I can see your new chair.